One of the hardest things to do in landscape photography is shoot directly into the sun. Then add on to that trying to focus stack. It can be so difficult and it's a very technical process. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make it as simple and easy as possible. Well, this is what you get in Arizona, a little landscape photography adventure with giant spiders. Uh, man, if Chris was here, she'd be going nuts right now. She absolutely loves these giant hairy spiders. Uh, it's pretty chilly right now, so you wouldn't think they'd be out, but uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty slow. He's kind of just hanging out and he's not really going crazy. When they get upset, their butt lifts up in the air, but this guy's pretty calm and just kind of hanging out. But man, that's a big, big guy. That's my hand, that's him. So that's a, that's a pretty big guy there. Beautiful Arizona sunrise, of course. It's in the opposite direction, all the color and the clouds. I'm facing off towards the northwest and there's nothing. So I'm gonna have to change up my tactics, I think. But giant tarantula is always uh, exciting when you almost step on. <laughs> Oh man, all right, yeah, typical Arizona. Oh man, look at that light. And I am running around like a chicken with my head cut off. All right guys, I'm trying to set up while in full blown panic mode here. So I have like a little saddle where you have two taller choyas up here and then I have a smaller one in the middle. There is a mountain in the background. It's really small with the wide angle lens. So what I'm trying to do is get as close as I can to have these cacti framing that mountain and make it a bit more balanced. Because I have saguaros also in the uh, on the left side of my screen, on the right and the left side of my screen, I don't want to cut them off. This is exciting, but also extremely stressful. <laughs> in your tripod, just like a little bit here and there is such a pain. Okay, calm down. Now I use autofocus, but I'm gonna manually select the points. And so it, I'm shooting towards the sun, so it is kind of a high dynamic range scene. All right. And what I'll do in between my focus stacks is I usually put my hand in to take a photo. That way later on I can uh, see where my focus stack images are. All right, so what I wanna do now is take a shot here, move that focus point right to the very front of this cacti. And I wanna take a shot to where the, the foreground is exposed uh, properly, we'll call it, a little bit better exposure. So I'm gonna take a shot there. And then I'm gonna take a shot here. I'm gonna move the focus point up here to this saguaro cactus. I'm gonna take another shot with the same exposure. And then we'll take one more shot now, uh, keeping the focus on that cactus with a properly exposed sky. Okay, so we got the shot, uh, but I'm waiting for the clouds to once again uh, light up. I think that sun's getting ready to pop up one more time, so we might get one more little uh, puff of light, we'll call it. But yeah, the clouds are moving that way, away from me, which kind of sucks. But what I want to do is wait for that sun just to pop up above the horizon there and maybe light up these, these cacti uh, in the foreground here, just to pop, make it pop a little bit more, that nice light, because the... The light was being reflected down. We're getting kind of that red glow onto these choyas here in the foreground, which looked nice, but the sky was just, it wasn't quite there just because of the clouds are moving away. They're really low on the horizon. And because I'm using this ultra wide angle lens, I'm at 14 millimeters. Uh, it just looks really small in the background. So it's not overly impactful. The sun's starting to come up. We're starting to get some rays to pop up through the blue sky, which is exactly what I was hoping for. A little bit more interest in the sky. So we're doing this again. So I'm going to expose for my focus stack, right? So I'm going to make sure that everything is exposed properly in the foreground and in the mountains in the background. That's going to be my darkest areas. So I'm making sure that I have plenty of information, plenty of room. I don't care about the sky right now. So I'm taking my first shots here on the foreground, two second timer, one tenth of a second, F8, ISO 64. And then my second focus point at infinity on the Saguaro cactus back there. And then with my focus at infinity, now I'm gonna expose for the sky. And I wanna be only one stop apart. I don't want each exposure to be 
more than one stop because it's not going to look natural when you try and blend it. It's not going to look good. So I'm going to have to take either two or even three exposures here. So right now, I've taken my shot uh, with the same exposure as my foreground. Now I'm going to lower it by one stop and I'm going to take another photo. Now on my histogram, it's showing that I'm still overexposed. So I'm going to take a third shot now. And this is showing me that I finally have everything now exposed properly. Everything in the sky is being exposed properly, but I'm going to take one more just in case. So I have everything I can possibly need, both in sharpness from my focus points. I have, everything is going to be in focus and everything is going to be properly exposed. Now we're going to go back on the computer. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to blend all of this together in Lightroom and Photoshop. So of course, as soon as I put the video camera away, that sun just pops over. Uh, it was pretty heavy cloud cover right there at the horizon, so I didn't think it was going to happen. But now we have this absolutely epic light on the choyas right here in front of me. So I'm doing my focus stack one more time. This time I'm doing F16. And the reason why I'm doing F16 is I want to get that sun star. So that's kind of the sweet spot where I don't do anything more than F16. Like I don't go to F18 or F20. Uh, because I have an F4 lens, that F16 is, is pretty good. Like, you know, the F8 to F11 is the sweet spot, but I want that sun star. So I am shooting at a little bit higher of an aperture. Uh, process is still the same. So I'm doing the two shots for the focus stacking, making sure that everything in the foreground is properly uh, exposed. And then I'm taking all my shots for the sky. So yeah, that's it guys. All right, <laughs> now let's go back to the computer. All right, so I wanna keep this again as simple as possible. So we're gonna do the majority of this in Lightroom and then we're gonna take it into Photoshop to do the focus stacking uh, with just a couple of clicks and then we're gonna bring in the sky. So I've done a little bit of editing already, uh, just doing some masking. So you guys can see here, I've done some radio filters. I did a filter just for the landscape. So I selected the sky, so I come up here select sky and then I inverted it to give me the landscape. I wanted to just add a little bit of golden color to everything. I usually do Adobe neutral when I'm shooting high dynamic range scenes. Uh, it's the least amount of contrast and saturation, but it gives me the most dynamic range. If you go to Adobe color, you can see it's absolutely terrible. So I keep it at Adobe neutral for these high dynamic range scenes like this. And I've done a little bit here with a sharpening, and a little bit of camera calibration just to bring in that nice color and, and a little bit more contrast. Uh, lens correction, of course, and chromatic aberration. And now what I wanna do is over here in the sky photo, you can see a before and after. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna match the landscape as far as the luminosity goes as close as possible when I go to blend these. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier than to have a photo that looks like this and trying to blend it. Uh, you're going to catch some edges that just, it doesn't look good. So now that that's all done, I'm going to select all three of these. So I'm going to hold down shift and select all three, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. I wanted to quickly mention as well that the reason why I only used one photo for the sky, even though I took a bunch, was because the photo that was one stop lower than the images I used or the exposure that I used for the focus stack, uh, when it's shown on the back of the camera, is actually only an 8-bit JPEG readout. So that histogram, I have a little more leeway when I get the raw file on the computer. I have a lot more dynamic range than what it shows on the back of the camera, which is a good thing. So I'm able to just use one photo instead of trying to blend, you know, multiple photos with like an HDR or something, you know, to do sky photos. I'm only having to use one, which is really good. So now I have these all labeled as FS1, FS2 for focus stack one and two. And then this is my sky file. So now I want to just use the focus stack images for right now. So I'm going to bring the sky up on top, but I'm going to turn it off. Now I don't need to do any, normally what I would do is I would highlight both. So hold down shift and highlight them both. Come up here to edit and auto align layers. But if you look at it right now, I don't need to move anything. You know, the clouds are moving right now, uh, which is a little bit of a problem. But if I try to auto align, I've already tried it before. It actually makes everything worse. It doesn't line up anything. So I'm not going to auto align the layers. But so if you look at your files and you see that maybe the trees or the cactus or whatever it is in your scene isn't lined up properly, then you would use the make sure they're selected and go to auto align layers. But I'm going to skip that step and go to auto blend. And then I'm going to just 
select the stack images you can see here and leave these two checked and hit okay. All right, so what I wanna do is hold down Shift, Option, Command, E, or if you're on a PC, it's gonna be Shift, Alt, Control, E, and that just stamps everything onto one layer. And with that one layer, I actually wanna put it above the sky photo. Uh, the reason why is I'm gonna use this as my stencil to, to cut out the sky. So I wanna put a white mask on before we do the selection, and then I wanna come up here to select and select sky. Now, if I hadn't put on a mask before and I did this selection, when I hit the mask, it would automatically replace the sky, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to grab a black brush at 100% opacity, and I'm going to start painting in the sky everywhere except for right next to the, the clouds. And the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is I want to go a little bit slower around these edges because it's hard to see right now, but these edges aren't perfect. So I want to lower my opacity as I get closer to the horizon down to like 30%. And I just want to brush it in slowly. Uh, I may have to make some adjustments to the sky. It's a little too dark. Uh, and, I, and I don't want that, you know, it's a, it's a little too dark compared to the foreground. Uh, I want to grab a brightness contrast layer and then I want to make sure I click this so it's only affecting the layer beneath. It's not affecting anything else. I'm going to bring it down below this because I want it just on the sky. And I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit there to match. All right, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple of other things, but I wanted to just to show you guys how to easily do a little bit of a focus stack and an exposure blend. So that's it, guys. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for the final product, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.